Welcome to day one of the Daily Roundup. I'm going to be your host, Dan Steers. <laughs> Alongside me is the AFL legend, Foresight representative, Mr. Josh Gibson. Washed up footballer, Dan. Yeah, Washed but you still can be a legend, which, yeah. which you are, because you do tell us a little <laughs> bit about the three premierships, two best, two best and fairest, all Australian, we've heard it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, but today yeah. you're actually a little bit of a, a, a camp draft champion as well. Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on. No, not you, at all. We couldn't just, wipe that smile off your face. Just with. one of the many competitors today that got out there and had a go and, and happened to uh, to get a couple around, which is which is what we're all here to do. Yep, so you, you had four, four start, three outside scores, building on that for the semi-finals. We're going to have a look at today's results. It was a cracker day, particularly for Matt Moffat. He was just on fire. He, he was on fire. He had, he had, I think he had 11 runners today. I think he had 11 runs, did he? But he was... Uh, he was super. His Very consistent. average, I, I looked it up on, on, on the website there, on the scores, his average was just over 81 points for those horses. What did you say? At 11 starters. Only 11, yeah. So, so yeah. that would have to be at least, I think, that will that, that'll be 10 outside scores. Yeah. 10 full rounds, including equal first with Rowan Marks, who also had a fantastic day, on a 91.67. That's what topped the day. Uh, I believe you looked up because there's an equal first. They have to split the go round money between first and second. So what is that in total? Yeah, ten thousand right. yeah, to the so winner. It was ten thousand to the winner, and it and it was three and a half for second. So splitting that, they both take home six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, and that doesn't take into the account all the other placings that Matt had. So. It's probably his shout at the bar tonight because he's uh, he's had a fantastic, yeah, fantastic day here at day one at Wollonga Park. Absolutely, and you, you had rattled that off, which was ten thousand to first, three and a half to second, three thousand to third, four thousand to second. This is just round money. I mean, yeah. uh, in most drafts that would be really big draft uh, for the for the combination or the final, and then fifth fifteen hundred, then sixth to tenth another thousand. We've got a second round tomorrow and semi-final are going to pay all that out again. It's a, it's a bit over 400000 in in prize money that they're going to give away here at the Ringers Western Gold Buckle Camp Draft Championship. A lot of money. It is, and, and, it, and it'll definitely get interesting in that second round because there'll be some horses that, that didn't get that score today, so that they know they can't make the sem semi-final, so they'll be charging ha hard tomorrow trying to get that round money in round two to, 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 cover, some, some of, to get, cover some of those entries. <laughs> entries of fuel and everything else. And I'm glad you mentioned it because I have done this now for a couple of years, been down here, interviewed a bunch of people, and I asked them about strategy. And nearly all of them just give me the same answer, which is it's just another draft, and you know we don't treat it any differently, but they do treat it differently. Knowing that you do need to get just two outside scores, usually to get back to the top 100 semi-final, and then, like you said, if you miss out on one of those, you go hard and just look for some of the prize money in the rounds. But you do see riders, particularly today, uh, ride a little conservative, a lot of drop gates. They'll drop gates, not really trying to override and lose the cow, just be you know happy that they've got a score moving forward. Tomorrow, we'll probably start to see them tighten up a little bit because they'll be a bit nervous. There was a lot of scores on those black cattle. We don't usually see black cattle here, yeah. uh, but there was there was over 60, I think 5% outside scores. So starting off with 350 odd starters, back to a top 100. Mm. That's still a lot of double up scores to look for tomorrow. There might be some people on two lower scores not actually make it through to the semi-final. Yeah, look, it's going to be interesting because you look at past years, you know, I think we've gone over, uh, you know, over 400 entries and, and double scores have got you back. So it's going to be some very interesting dra drafting tomorrow. You're going to see all these different game styles play out. So you're going to have these riders, as you said, that have got the good first round score looking to consolidate that to make the semi-final. You're going to have some people out there that have bombed out early on and they're going for second round prize money. So. Um, it's going to make for some fantastic drafting. As you said, we've been running on the blacks today, but tomorrow we're stepping back to the Herefords, which are really right. traditional to Wollonga Park. So it'll be interesting to see if that line of cattle change the way that people go about it and, um, and how they run. Well, let's have a look. We'll go quickly through and we'll have a look and we'll just talk over the top two scores today, which we already mentioned. Uh, we have, and, and, I'll, and I'll just... Get your technology happening there, Dan. Pull, pull it up here. I can't see yeah, my face. Yeah, yeah. Since I shaved, 
by the way, this thing's having a bit of a hard time picking and up have on you, the Just on a side, how have you felt 40 today? You know, it's been a big day for you. Most people don't like to work on their birthday. You've been flat out. How's it all been going? It's been great to be down here turning. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning the age. I could have just said my birthday. Uh, but 40, I, did, I did turn the big 4-0 and I believe it's, well, I do know it's your year. You've turned 40 already <laughs> this year. Yeah. Um, the difference is I look 21, you look 50. Yeah, well, that's... But let's get into today's runs. Who are we, who are we going to look at first up? All right, let's have a look here. We're, we're pulling up uh, Rowan Marks here on his horse, Turner Marks Editor. So here he is in the camp, right up at the face on, like you said, on the black horse. I did have a little look. He's an eight, a seven-year-old gelding. He's by Terra Lee Complex out of a Hazelwood Conman Mare in Country Life, and that's out of an Acres Mare. Uh, Rowan's had a lot of success today. He ran a lot of scores. We're watching his run now, absolutely fantastic horsework outside as we're witnessing. Black horse, black cow. Yeah, look, he was super. You see the way that he got out of that gate. He really attacked that first peg. We knew that a lot weren't undercutting that first, so you really wanted to get out to the right and cover, and he did that early, which, which set up that first peg to be really aggressive, and, and he followed that through to the second, and, and from there it rolled off nicely. So. You can see here, really, we, he tightens up this second peg again, which um, which not everyone did today, you know. They got that first peg and then they let them drift a little bit, so it was a really impressive run. Yeah, Cattle again, absolutely fantastic running beast. Like I said, he, he had a lot of scores. Let's, let's shoot across here to Matt Moffat. He's riding JMD Fascinator, which is an eight-year-old mare, come out of the cutting program, uh, bred by Justin McDonald, he's the breeder, owner is David Bell and Matt is on fire. He is a Foresight, fellow Foresight rider, so that's got to make you happy. And having a look at him and his camp really put a lot of pressure on that cow, didn't he? He, he did. He's, uh, he's got the hot hand at the moment. Again, he's, he's all day he's been super consistent as we touched on early. And again, he had one of these faster running beasts, but Matt was just in total control. You look here when he just, he just swoops around that second peg and um, he really, if you were here today watching camp drafting and you hadn't seen the sport before, you'd be going home tonight going, I've got a fair understanding about what this game's about. And Matt Moffat's the one that's really planted that in my mind because he was super out there. So I mentioned it's an eight-year-old mare, but what I didn't mention, which will make you happy, it's a cat and hat as well, which is the same as your <laughs> great horse, LeBron. You can actually see a little bit of similarities running outside here in the replay, the little bit of a kink in the tail something LeBron likes to do, flattening out there, really took some ground off that cow in that second peg. Another fantastic run. A couple of special mentions that we're gonna do, and we're gonna focus on, happens to be another Foresight rider <laughs> in Huey Miles. He did win the cutout, but not on this horse. We're gonna first have a look at a horse that we've both bred to, which is a Willinga Park, owned by Terry Snow. This is Willinga Park Smooth Talker. He's a beautiful black stallion. Really, it's only his first year really camp drafting. I believe it might have been within two weeks this horse went from a maiden horse to an open horse, winning the open at Armadale earlier this year. And now didn't, didn't have a top score, uh, round score. Might have picked up some round money, but at a 23 camp, looks an absolute picture, particularly on the back black cattle. We're both excited that we've got progeny on the ground by this horse. Let's have a look at how he runs his course outside now. Yeah, look, it, it was it got a little tough as you just saw there on that first peg, and and Huey, he, he's such a great hand. He was able to um, take control of that and not let it stress him. But as you saw in that camp, you know this horse has had a really strong cutting foundation. He completely just dominated that beast right up the front. If it was the top cutout tomorrow night, I reckon everyone would have been going crazy because it was uh, it was a pleasure to watch and. And after it got things uh, sorted around that first peg, it was pretty smooth sailing after that. And, and Huey Miles, uh, not too dissimilar to Matt Moffat, they just draft so neat. They look a picture, it's a beautifully presented horse. Terry Snow must be just wrapped in this horse. <coughs> I know you said yesterday, you talked to Troy Palmer, he, was, he had big wraps on this horse himself, and he's not even drafting the horse. No, he does, and I think that I think that this horse has transitioned so well out of that cutting pen, you know. Now we're seeing him in the camp drafting arena. As you said, he's only had a pretty short career, but he's been pivotal in that time. So he's another one we're gonna have to watch for the uh, the remainder of, of the uh, gold buckle and, and see if here he can work some more magic. So now we're moving on to the highest cutout for the first round, which is a 24, back to Hugh Miles, Foresight rider riding up the riding the great stallion in times up. 
So the only 24 cut out today, so we're going to really see a lot of pressure. This horse is owned by uh, Peter Schumach in Tamworth. Didn't have any luck outside. It was one of the few beasts that ducked hard yeah. left. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was super tough. As you said, we didn't see many go hard left. What was really impressive with that 24 is that, yeah, but he was up the front, similar to his last run, but that cow was really taking him on and had a lot of speed. And, and as we know, time's up. He's a, he's a fantastic stallion. And, and that's why he got rewarded with another 24 in the camp today. So speaking about that, it's going to be tomorrow being the second day, it's going to be the preliminary round of the cutout. So it's going to be exciting. I dare say Hugh Miles is going to be there on those couple of great stallions. We're going to get to cheer him on uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully they, they progress through to the final. You did mention earlier about the second round, essentially now somebody like a Time's Up who's more than capable of winning a round. I, I'm, I near on would bet you know thousand dollars on his one money here in round money in previous years. Uh, he's going to be coming out hard. Definitely, and what is also very exciting is we've now added a new a new draft here this weekend. We've got this stallion shootout draft. It's a two hundred and fifty dollar entry with all of the entry money. It's hundred percent going into the kitty. So. Time's up without a doubt, we'll be in that. He'll be one to watch and it's a fantastic addition to the program that you're gonna see over the next few days. And Mark Buttsworth is also a foresight rider. It's a bit the same as Stylish. One Stylish Pepto didn't have any luck outside today, so he missed out on a score. He's gonna be going hard. That horse now is, I believe, 2021. 20, He's only saved him for this draft. He has not been drafting him. He really just wants to come here and do well. So he's, he's gonna have a crack tomorrow. He's gonna have a crack now. He's got that stallion draft as well as the cutout. Mm. A few others as we start to wrap this up, just honorable mentions who are super consistent. We have role marks who we mentioned off the top. Matt Moffat, Pete Kamiski, Butsy, Hugh Miles, Troy Palmer, Ben Hall and Mark Palmer. They are at the top of the leaderboard, but not just with one horse, they're up at the top of the leaderboard with several horses. So it's gonna make an extremely tight race getting back to the semi-finals. That's gonna be exciting. A couple of other more shout outs with previous winners with their horses. Pete Kamiski on Irvine's Just Jim, last year's winner. He's got a massive score from today, I believe an 88.67, 89, somewhere in there. As well as Matt Holtz on Nonda's Last Frontier, who was a previous winner. He had another score, I think roughly the same. So those guys are coming back. There's plenty of them. We could sit here all night talking about them, but just to talk about Pete, you know, he finished the day off really strong. I think from about run 260 on, he had three or four more horses. I don't think I saw him get less than an 87. So we always know that if, if Pete commits, he's got a lot of runners going into the second round semi-final. He's dangerous. You know, he's the type of guy that rocks up to a semi-final. He has 10 in there. <laughs> And, and that's why he's won the that's why he's won the gold buckle three times. He knows how to get it done. He'll be he'll be at camp tonight, as we know, Pete. He'll be sitting back having a beer, just relax. But he'll know in his own mind that that he's got his he's got his team of horses in a really good position as we go into day two here at Willinga Park. He'll, he'll be enjoying a few meetings tonight, <laughs> uh, so to speak. All right. Lastly, to wrap up, this is the Ringers Western Gold Buckle Camp Draft Championship. They've got a special offer. So while the draft is running, if you're there online, there's a 25% off discount code for any online purchases. So you just have to go to the Ringers Western uh, website, type in at checkout in all capitals, Willinga Park 25, and they'll get you 25% off. So nice and easy, this, isn't it? It's easy. Willinga Park 25, all capitals in that discount code. It's going to be a super discount. Go on, buy some stuff. Dan and I both love the Ringers Western gear. We've worn heaps of it over the journey, and uh, that's that's pretty special what they've put together here for for everyone streaming at home watching the uh, the Gold Buckle here at Willinga. Well, thank you, Josh. Thanks for joining us on day one. Thanks for having me, mate, and thanks to everyone at home watching. We'll see you tomorrow.